Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome again to uh, the series of talks on convex optimization and today we are going to start a very important topic called separation theorem for convex sets. As I had already told you that uh, separation theorem for convex sets are important because optimality itself can be expressed as the sep can be expressed through the separation of two disjoint convex sets. So, this topic is of extreme importance to our study. And observe that with the term separation, the term convex set is highlighted here, because in general for a non-convex case this thing called separation need not work. So, what does one mean by separation? What one means is the following that if you take two convex sets which are disjoint from each other, could be this one and this one, right? They are convex sets, but they are disjoint from each other in R3. Then in R 3 you can pass a plane which separates these two, that is you basically put a border or a wall between these two. So, this thing lies on one side of the wall and this thing lies on other side of the wall. So, in R 2 which is our playground, you see here I have a convex set C 1, another convex set C 2 and they are disjoint, then I can draw a line separating these two. So, this line which is an hyperplane in R 2 divides as you know the whole space into two parts. So, C 1 lies in one half space, C 2 lies in other half space that is exactly what is meant by separation. I will mathematically describe this thing. Suppose this hyperplane H is given as set of all x, I am writing in the general sense of R n though everything is in R 2. Suppose this is this is what the hyperplane is. Then A of Z, where Z belongs to C1 is greater than or equal to B for all Z in C1, and A of Y is less than or equal to B for all Y in C2, which is in the lower half space. So, that is exactly what is the meaning of separation that the whole set of C 1 is contained in the upper half space here and the whole set of C 2 is contained in the lower half space. There cannot be an intermingling that is a part of C 1 is in the lower half space and part in upper half space and part in upper half part of C 2 is in upper half space and part in lower half space. Such a thing would never happen, but means you can always draw a boundary. But look at this non-convex case, this non-convex case you know you can draw out what I have done is I have taken the interior of the first quadrant and interior of the third quadrant that is writing more technically I have taken interior of R 2 plus union interior of minus R 2 plus right. Now, look at the union of the second quadrant with the fourth quadrant. Now, if you look at these two sets, this first one and the second one, they are having empty intersection. But can you draw a line such that the one set, this set is in one side of the line this set is in the other side of the line. Okay, let us try to draw a, draw a line. Whatever line you draw, you cannot put one of these sets into one part and another set of this set into the other part. There is one in one half space, other in other half space. Whatever be your line, it really does not matter. Whatever be your line, it really does not matter. This thing need not hold for the general non-convex case. Of course, you can say okay, no never mind, I can just draw a non-convex set like this, another non-convex set like this and okay, I can say this. Yeah, of course, there can be instances where this can hold this separation, 
but it will never hold in general for every pair of disjoint non convex sets, but for every pair of disjoint convex sets this thing will always hold and that is what is our uh, goal. So, we would see we will now prove that such a thing can be mathematically established or demonstrated. Our first case would be the simplest one. C convex set x a point outside it. So, what I am having here is something like this. a set C and a point X outside it. What we intend to say that this set C and this point X can be strictly separated. So, C and X can be strictly separated. So, what I mean by this? What I mean is the following that x would lie in one of the strict half spaces and c would lie in one of the strict half spaces that this line would neither touch c nor x. At the same time dividing these two into two different segments that is putting x in one half space and putting c in the other half space it would never touch either of them. So, it means that if this is written as h such that a x equal to b, then what I have is the following strict separation means the following. So, it should not touch which means in this case x is in the lower half space, c is in the upper half space. So, a of x is strictly less than b and a of z is strictly greater than b for all z in c and that is what we would like to establish. For any closed set C, the set C need not be bounded, it could be unbounded also, it does not matter, but x has to be point outside C and that that is all. How do I establish this? The establishment of this thing calls in to the fore the notion of a strongly convex function. And so, we have to learn something about strongly convex functions, which we had already discussed in the last lecture. We learn something bit more and then go in and talk about uh, this separation procedure. So, just recall strong convexity. So, strong convexity means that there would exist a number rho such that for any x y you give me I can always write for any lambda between 0 and 1. this is less than lambda times f of y now this is what is strong convexity rho being greater than 0 now when x is not equal to y norm of y minus x whole square is strictly bigger than 0 and this would imply that f of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda x is strictly less than f of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda x plus. So, you have added a positive number to this. So, you, you it gets a strict reduction. 
So, this is again this shows that for x not equal to y and lambda in 0 and 1. So, then this whole thing is positive actually. Of course, here I have to write lambda in 0 1 f of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda x is strictly less than lambda f y plus 1 minus lambda f x. So, this means that every strongly convex function is strictly convex. So, again I start with a very simple problem, but it is a homework for you. So, if f is a strictly convex function, defined on a convex set C, on a closed convex set C, then if there is a minima, minimum, there is a minimum of f over c, then it must be unique. But for the strongly convex case, we have a better result. The result is, at, is as follows. Strongly convex functions always have strongly convex functions always have a unique minimizer over a closed convex set. Those who have some knowledge of optimization or those who are experts who are just watching this possibly for fun uh, or trying to see how a fellow researcher is speaking about the subject. Uh, for them of course, it is obvious and you know how to do it. It is all about coercivity of the function f. So, but for others, I would not ask you to get into the details, especially those from the engineering background. I would just like them to keep this in mind. So, that is why strongly convex functions are so important because you are always guaranteed a unique minimizer over a closed convex set. There will be a minimizer. It does not say that the set has to be bounded. The set need not be bounded, but still it will give you a unique minimizer and that is a very, 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 very rather important result which we separate out. How this result is important for us is what we are going to see. So, we are now going back to this situation of a convex set. and a point x outside it. So, how do I am supposed to draw a separating hyperplane, which is strictly separating in the sense that we have just defined. In order to do so, we just do the following. Let us drop a perpendicular from x to the set C. And then you know that if 
except this point say which I call as x bar, there is no other point on this line segment which is lying on C. So, through any such line right through any such line any such point just okay take the midpoint of this. draw a line perpendicular to this perpendicular line to x minus x bar and this could be the separating hyperplane or strictly separating hyperplane. How do we guarantee that if I just drop a perpendicular there would exist an x bar, it will go and hit an of course, from this picture it is clear that if you draw a perpendicular on x, it will go and hit a point x bar on the set C, because the set C is close. So, the boundary of the set is also included in the set, but how can I be mathematically sure that such an x bar would always exist or such an x bar will also be there and this would lead us to this result, we have to, we will just use this result. So, we will now first talk about when there is a point x and a set C what we are trying to measure by the perpendicular, we are trying to measure the distance between x and the distance between distance between x and the set C. So, what is the me meaning of distance of the point x from the set C? So, what you do is with every point in C, you calculate the distance of x basically you calculate the length of x when every point y in C you calculate the length y minus x. So, basically what you do you calculate for every y in C you do that and by the distance it is very clear should be the minimum one that is the distance from the point x. So, you take the infimum of these values when y belongs to the set C. So, how do I guarantee that this would happen? So, finding the distance is same as trying to find the square of square of the distance in the sense that I can look now at the problem of minimizing So, any solution of this problem is it is obvious is a solution of this problem and I am not going to tell you how to do that this is so clear that you can just take up a pen and paper and just finish it off in a minute. So, now observe that this one is a strongly convex function, this function is a strongly convex function. So, homework is as follows. Of course, in our general writing y and x this all are in R n. So, this set C is in R n. In our general writing we will write everything in terms of general spaces though explanations would be in R 2. So, f of x is equal to show that it is strongly convex find rho in this case now this set c is a closed convex set and this is a strongly convex function. So, what we have said that strongly convex function always has have a unique minimizer over a closed convex set. So, there must exist some y in C such that. So, what would happen is that there would exist a y bar say in C such that y bar minus x whole square is minimum of so 
So, their x bar what we are calling here is actually what is the y bar we have just written same thing. So, I will just draw again for you the picture. Now, this simply means that the distance of x from c is nothing but norm of y bar minus x. So, what I am always guaranteeing that there exists a unique point y bar because a minima, minimizer is unique. Of course, this y bar is unique, there cannot be more than one. There exists a unique y bar such that at that point norm of y minus x bar, this is the distance of x from c that is the minima is achieved at y bar and is done uniquely. So, more generally y bar is called the projection you know when you have the x y coordinates. So, if you have x y, so what do you do if you drop a perpendicular on the x axis you get the x coordinate, if you drop a perpendicular on the y axis you get the y coordinate. So, this is the same idea. So, it's, so y bar is called the projection of x on the set c. Now, the crux of the matter is as follows. Take this convex set C and take this x. This y bar of course, is the nearest point from x, nearest point from x to C. But you see if I take an x bar he, this another say x dash here it is the same y bar which is the nearest. This is not the nearest because then it will not be perpendicular it will be slanted. If you take another x, x double dash here then you see the same y bar is the nearest one. So, a single point y bar could be the nearest point or projection points to many many such x bars. So, for any x any vector on this line, on this line, on this line and anything in between the projection is the same point y bar. For example, if but if you take it on this side suppose you take some x tilde then the projection here is y tilde, but y tilde cannot be a projection to this point say x hat, the y tilde cannot be a projection to x hat, here the projection would be y hat. So, at these rough corners of convex sets, these sort of situations can arise and this thing actually forms a cone that is the set of all x's will actually form a cone which will be called a normal cone in the future. This is this will be called a normal cone, but that is not exactly what we need at this moment. We will go ahead and discuss this thing slightly later. We will learn about them slightly later, but what I want to recollect at this point is that at this points that is at the, oh for all these x dash, x, x tilde, x double dash, y bar is the only projection point. Now, you see if I do not have a convex set this unique projection business does not work, because for example, if you take the set which is epigraph of y equal to minus mod x. So, you take the epigraph the set c as the epigraph of minus mod x. So, take any point on the line here drop a perpendicular this is the nearest one drop a perpendicular just by symmetry or from simple Euclidean geometry you can prove that this side is equal to this side right because what would happen is that if this because this is equal to this because these are at 45 degree angle. So, this is equal to this. So, this is also equal to this if this is 45 this is 45 this is 45. 
So, what does it mean? It means this is equal to this, this is equal to this 45, 45 the same angle. So, this, this is an isosceles triangle, this is an isosceles triangle. So, this is equal to this, this is equal to this and so I have uh, this side is equal to this side. Now, once I know this you, so this for this point x, this y bar 1 and this y bar 2, two different points, both of them are projection points. But because this is a non-convex function and so the epigraph here as you see is a non-convex set, for a non-convex function a point outside the set can have two different projection points. Such a thing cannot occur just because of the use of the factor, use of this idea on strong convexity. Optimization is a great and beautiful subject because these are proved in a very simple and very beautiful manner, so, but we will not get into all these things. So, now <laughs> we will start proving what we had just discussed. So, we will go back, draw the picture again. See, so there is a point say x outside. And then I want to describe the hyperplane which will strictly separate the two. Much more interesting. Uh, let me mention that what I am going to give you here is a sketch of the proof, not absolutely hand waving, but not extremely rigorous either. So, what we uh, really need to look here is the following that if you take any point or maybe I will just make it more y inside and this is y bar which is the projection of x on c if you join y with y bar, this angle is always obtuse. Whatever y you take in this convex set, this will always be true. Now, this proof we are avoiding at the moment because it needs certain calculations which will go on. So, we are just avoiding it, but from the geometry you can really make it clear to yourself that this is exactly what is happening. Now, let us look at something more uh, interesting is that you see let me denote by s x minus the projection of c projection of x on c that is x minus y bar. Now, this s cannot be equal to 0. So, obviously, x and y bar are not the same point because x is a point outside c and y bar is a point in c because y bar is a solution of a constant minimization problem. So, y bar must be feasible and hence y bar is in c. Now, we will employ this obtuse angle business that we just spoke about. In order to do so, what we do here is the following. So, s is this one x minus y bar. Now, take any other y here y minus y bar this inner product. So, this is your s this s vector this inner product must be negative or non positive because the angle is obtuse you know how to do dot products. So, I can now write s of y minus what is y bar, y bar is x minus s. So, you have s y plus s minus x or 
S S minus S X plus S Y to be less than or equal to 0. So, this can be written as norm square of S minus S X plus S Y. This simply means that S of Y is less than or equal to S of X minus norm S square. We take this thing to the other side. Now, observe that norm S is not equal to 0 because S is not equal to 0. So, this is strictly less than S of X. So, this is what we actually have obtained that ok. Now, you can say ok, I have got a strict separation, take any number which is between S x, which is lying strictly between S x and norm S square and that will do the job, uh, S x minus norm S square and S x. So, take any real number lying between this real number and this real number strictly in between them and that will do the job, but we can uh, really figure out an exact one. See, you can write this as following supremum. So, this is true for every y in C. So, this thing is true for all y in C. So, you can write the supremum over y in C of S y. This is obviously less than equal to this, which is strictly less than this, and hence the whole thing is strictly less than S of x. Now, this is a representation of from this projection business, but how do I really speak about the finding the hyperplane? Okay, let me do that. Let us find an R which I can write as half of S x. So, x is given to me, s I have found. So, I am writing this as the supremum. Of course, the supremum here has a finite value because it is bounded by s x as we have seen. Supremum s of y, where y is in c, this is a plus sign. Of course, this r is depending on the your choice of s, of course, uh, because it depends on x is again on it, s is again depending on the x, the choice of your choice of the point x. So, you have taken this r, now this r is what we really want that is a hyperplane which or which we like like this or we can write as l is a set of all x such that s of x is equal to r. Observe that s x minus r, what does it give me? It gives me s x minus half s x minus half supremum y element of C S y. So, this will become half of S x minus supremum of. So, this whole thing obviously, you know from this fact that this is strictly bigger than 0. So, you get S of x is strictly bigger than this r. So, this is lying in the x is lying in the upper half space. Similarly, you can show that for all y in C, s of y is strictly less than r. Show this. 
So, this is my required hyperplane which strictly separates. So, I, we have mathematically demonstrated this procedure. Now, comes a second question. Okay. We have taken the most simplistic scenario of a point and a set. How do I extend this scenario to two convex sets? Because we were speaking about two convex sets always, they, are, they have been non empty. Of course, just a point x is itself a convex set and that it been outside a set immediately tells that these two convex sets are disjoint. Now, let me consider this case now. C 1 is convex and compact that is, is convex closed and bounded and C 2 is convex and closed obviously. Be aware that in this all the statements of separation theorem, this set C was always closed though need not be bounded, but this set X a single point is obviously closed bounded and convex. So, it, it is a compact set. So, I am making the first generalization of this by replacing this X by some compact set. You will see why such a such first step of first step generalization to include compactness is useful. What I am trying to say is that if this happens and C1 intersection C2 is empty, that is, they are disjoint. So you have a convex set like this, C which is closed, C1, I sorry, C2 which is closed, but need not be bounded and you have another like this C 1, which is closed and bounded. What we are trying to say is that then a strict separation is possible. So, the thing is our conclusion is strict separation is possible. Now, you might ask the question okay, if I throw out compactness from C 1 strict separation is that possible or not. So, our question is throw out compactness from C 1 compactness and just assume C 1 to be closed. is strict separation holding. The answer is of course, negative otherwise we would not get into all these issues. Let us see why that answer is negative. Take the x axis and y axis take this plane, this half space con along with this line x axis. Consider this to be C 2. For C 1, consider the epigraph of the convex function y equal to 1 by x for x greater than 0. Of course, the domain is x greater than 0. So, there is an epigraph of f where f is equal to 1 by x where x strictly greater than 0. Now, you see this 1 by x is asymptotically going towards the x axis, asymptotically going towards 0. That is, as you go further and further towards infinity more and more towards infinity, this distance between this x axis and this curve keeps on decreasing, but they never touch each other. So, now 
if I draw any line other than the x axis to separate this A p f and C 2, then no matter what line I draw, there will be a point where it will go and cut the epigraph of f, because it is asymptotically going towards 0. As a result of which, even though these two sets are closed and they are having empty intersection, you cannot have a strict separation. Here the separating line is this x axis, the yellow line. So, that is why compactness is so very, very important. So, how do you go about trying to prove this fact? So, this would be a partial homework for you, not a complete homework. Now, observe consider the convex set C 1 minus C 2. Now, of course, it is convex, you can prove it, I do not need to do that. Now, observe that 0 does not belong to C 1 minus C 2. Why? If 0 belongs to C 1 minus C 2, there is a common point between C 1 and C 2, because then there exists a x, x in C 1 uh, and y in C 2 such that 0 is equal to x minus y and hence x is equal to y. So, both are in x is in, so these are common elements of C 1 and C 2, but C 1 and C 2 is disjoint. So, this cannot happen. Now, you observe here is a convex set and there is a point outside it and if this set is closed, I can apply what I have learned just now. The question is, is C 1 minus C 2 closed? So, this brings us to this to the following question. So, if C 1 and C 2 are two convex sets and both are closed, the question is, is this closed? Is C 1 plus C 2 closed? This answer is not true in general, general unless one of them is compact. Here, we have assumed C 1 is compact, so C 1 minus C 2 is finally closed, but here C 1 plus C 2 in general, because minus is nothing just a, you can say plus or minus C 2. So, C 1 plus C 2 is not closed unless one of them is compact, because you take again an example of this type, where you take a convex set like this, y equal to 1 by x. And this y equal to minus 1 by x. Look at these two. So, take any two points. So, take a point here and take a point, take a point here. So, this is my C 1 and this is my C 2, both are closed and both are disjoint from each other in fact. You see of course, disjoint, disjoint is not needed. I want to construct C 1 plus C 2. So, I take a point here, I take a point here, I do the vector addition, okay, let this take this point here. So, I do this vector addition, I get a point here. So, what I am doing is that if I keep on doing for all points here like this, this sort of combinations, I will basically get this set, this whole half space, but I will not get this line, the red line. So, this red line is not in C 1 plus C 2. So, but this hence, but this is a part of the closure of C 1 plus C 2, closure of the half space. So, as a result C 1 plus C 2 in this case, this one is not closed. But in our case, because we have assumed C 1 to be compact, so C 1 minus C 2 is closed and of course, now you can go ahead 
and apply the result that you already know. So, that application has to be done as an homework. So, finish this thing as an homework. So, strict separation can be done. between C 1 and C 2, C 2 when C 1 is compact and C 2 closed. There is another very important conclusion from this, all this is a study of the supporting hyperplane theorem. So, if you take a convex set of this form, take a point here on the boundary, you can always draw a tangential line through the boundary, so that this hyperplane creates a half space and the whole set C is in one side of the half space. So, here is the convex set. And now, here is a point x on the boundary, I can always prove that there is a hyperplane passing through this point x, so that the whole set C is in one half space, it does not have two half spaces. For example, if I take a point inside and if I try to draw a line, I can draw a line, then it will the, the set C would be covering both the half spaces. But here in this case, where I have just the set C and a point here, and I draw a line here, for example, tangentially in this case, as it looks like in the picture, then C is in one half space, it does not come in spill over to this half space. This whole thing, this is called a supporting hyperplane. So, what does it say is that if you give me a closed set, then I can always have a supporting hyperplane. So, what is the idea behind this fact? The idea is as follows that if you have a closed set, so you know the supporting hyperplane does not mean that it will touch only at one point. For example, here I can have this itself. So, suppose this is a convex set. So, this whole side can be a part of that supporting hyperplane. The idea essentially is as follows, suppose you have a set C and because you take any point x in the boundary. So, given any point x in the boundary, there is a supporting hyperplane passing through that point, that is exactly what the theorem says. So, what it says that if because it is in the boundary point, any neighborhood you take, there is a point in C and a point outside C, that is the meaning of a boundary point. And as a result, you can have a sequence of points coming and converging to x, uh, keeping in view the mind, keeping in view the audience, I would not like to go into the details of the proof, because it would require more sophistication. and would really be a proof for mathematics students. So, I am assuming engineers are, are also viewing this. So, what you can observe that if you keep on uh, drawing this sort of balls around x, one there will be a point inside x and there will be a point outside x. So, those x's, those point sequences, if you think of it as something you are hopping one after another, you can hop on on these points and come on to x. For each of these point x is actually a point outside the set C in C complement and from there you can have strictly, for each of them you can have a strictly separating hyperplane. And finally, you can come in like this and come and touch the boundary at x and that would give you. So, basically what would happen is that that would generate 
a sequence of planes which can come and touch in X and that would give you the separating hyperplane or the sorry not the separating hyperplane the supporting hyperplane to C at X. So, with this very basic ideas about separation we close our discussion and go into more of the optimization issues in the next class.